Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 and 9 months FY23 earnings conference call of Suvain Pharmaceuticals Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishab Barar from CDR India. Thank you and over to you. Good day everyone and thank you for joining us on this call to discuss the Q3 and 9 months FY23 earnings for Suvin Pharmaceuticals. We have with us Mr. Venkat Jasti, Managing Director and Mr. Venkat Raman Sundar, Vice President of Corporate Affairs and Mr. Subha Rao, CFO of the company. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and may involve risks and uncertainties. Documents relating to the company's performance have been mailed to you earlier. I would now like to request Mr. Jasti to share his perspectives on the performance and outlook. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Richard. And uh, good afternoon, everyone, for tuning in to the updates on the quarter three results of the Pharmaceuticals Limited. As you know, we have a quarter on quarter a sequential increase in the revenue, but if you see the nine months, it's more or less flat. At the same time, uh, the EBITDA is uh, less by about 30 or so because this is mainly due to the product uh, <coughs> mix. As you know, uh, the specialty chemical has uh, more or less equal to the number, the earlier number of last year we have achieved in this quarter three itself. Because this is uh, because of the seasonality of the uh, uh, uptake, because uh, the, when the growth, I mean, uh, sowing starts, uh, sometimes it will be more front and sometimes more to the backward. And this time it is moved to the third quarter itself and some little bit going into the quarter. And that means uh, uh, this, is, this is keeps happening and it may not be the same year on year. This uh, time, next time it may be a little bit later also if possible, but it will be bunched up in one quarter, right? Like uh, compared to the last year, third quarter, this year, third quarter, the shallow can be almost doubled. But whereas the uh, the cramps has uh, come down, and mainly due to the uh, uh, less COVID uh, uh, revenue out of this, this year. And uh, <clears throat> we have mentioned in the last town call that, uh, I mean, originally in the year beginning, uh, because of the less COVID uh, molecules, uh, the revenue will be down by around 5% or so. And in the middle of the year, we have said uh, we may be able to catch up to the plant ratio compared to last year number, or maybe a little bit better. So as uh, now this thing stands, I think we maybe uh, we'll be able to come to the same number as last year. Maybe a slight growth of one or two. Also, is a possibility. Yeah. And if you see on the macro level, you know. Uh, since I cannot give you any kind of a uh, uh, projection, uh, since our visibility is only six months, I just want to give you some kind of macro scenario. As you know, the CDMO business is uh, globally growing around 77 percent with a mass market size of about 130 billion, and. Uh, after this COVID uh, debacle, now the R&D thing is coming back uh, from the global pharma into the regular field. And also, we have heard from our customers during CPSI in November that uh, they're also looking to change uh, from China to other countries. And India is likely to get benefited. It may not happen overnight, but uh, things are going in the right direction as well. So it's uh, what we have created over the last 20 years. Uh, uh, we've been doing uh, customer interaction and customer, uh, <coughs> stickiness and uh, more uh, opportunities uh, for us with increasing capacities and increasing 
chemistries and uh, well, as you know, we have been doing uh, very good for the last uh, four years with the CAGR of over 41 percent growth. So, yeah, all in all, uh, we see uh, you may see this uh, up and down as you know in our business model, it's not quarter on quarter, sometimes it may not be year on year, but at the same time, uh, things are looking good, but there will be ups and downs in between, and which you most of you are well aware of it. And I think uh, that's where I want to. Long term growth prospects are very good, and uh, we expect that to benefit us in the long run, especially with the chain of uh, one, uh, chain of minus one, whichever way you call it. Uh, I think all along we look good, but uh, this is the uh, status as of now. I think it's better for me to answer you rather than giving you uh, more of the outlook. So I now look forward for your questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have our first question from the line of Rashmi Shetty from Dalit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, on this specialty chemical business, uh, though you alluded the growth is through seasonality, uh, we just want to understand that the current sales, you know, during the quarter and in the first nine months it has come, uh, it is from the uh, only two molecules or, you know, we have received some repeat orders from the third molecule also. And uh, how do we, uh, earlier we typed that, you know, there would be a flattish growth in FI23 in specialty chemical business. But now because of the higher growth in the nine months, uh, do we upgrade our guidance on uh, this piece of business for this particular year? Yeah, as I was telling, it's the cyclical in nature compared to other uh, businesses in this in calorie chemicals. Uh, the situation with respect to the uh, drought or the, uh, the rainfall or whatever it is, the starting of the crops and all, they keep changing it. So this year it was uh, pre formed it looks like, and uh, they got uh, more requirement came in. I think uh, they have taken based on the additional limited also. That's why if you see in nine months itself, we have surpassed the last year's number. With respect to the product, the one product, uh, the, a small amount of the third product also sold in the first quarter, which we have told you earlier. Otherwise, these two products are the main things. Same things. But uh, at the same time, it can happen that the next uh, requirement will maybe push the not into the uh, first, second quarter, maybe into the third and fourth quarter again, all bunched up in one go. But all in all, uh, we look, uh, I mean, <clears throat> As per the uh, customer thing only, we are saying it's a practice growth on the specialty chemicals. But uh, when these things are uh, good, then suddenly they may get the requirement and uh, we will be able to supply in time. So that's the way it is. Uh, that's the way it goes. Okay. And so then on CDM or pharma business, you know, we uh, in the middle of the year, uh, you know, we expected that probably for this year we will be able to do some uh, small single digit growth. Uh, but considering the fact that, you know, we have shown a decline in second quarter and third quarter, uh, do you think that, you know, for this full year, uh, you know, we will see a decline in the pharma business, uh, cramp business, or you think that, you know, some sales were deferred and it will come back in quarter four? I think, uh, very right, decline will be there, but uh, we hope to, I mean, uh, quarter core may not make it to the uh, complete uh, number to that level, uh, but uh, in general, uh, based on the uh, feedback during this um, CPHI last November, I think uh, now is the first quarter, and all the year starts where we have most of the European and American companies in January, so I think we should be able to see uh, more number of opportunities coming and of course repeat business to be coming in. I think as of now, except the COVID and some genetic molecules, other things are all on track only. I think they're not much different. So we expect that single digit growth should still happen. 
uh, in the pharma business so you expect that x covid molecule or uh, you still expect a single digit growth yes properly yes. yes okay okay sir thank you that's it from my side thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question please press star and one on your phone We have our next question from the line of Cinderella Carvalho from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, we are looking at this quarter and the Cinderella, your voice is very feeble. Uh, is this better, sir? Yes. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for this. Uh, so, if we look at this quarter, we have higher contribution from the specialty chemical side, and still we have maintained our EBITDA margin. So, is that a better contribution from the new products that we have in the specialty chemical, or how should we understand uh, the margin aspect for this quarter? No, no. I mean, see, you cannot attribute everything to one product or other. If the total product makes, especially the things that goes in. The specialty chemicals are same as last year. Uh, there is no difference. So the the, uh, uh, the improvement, if at all, is in the craft side of the business. Uh, even though volume is less, uh, the product mix, you know, value addition and all that stuff will play a role. So, but this uh, year on year basis, it will be uh, even out. No, it will not be same. Okay. Okay, that is helpful, sir. So just wanted to understand in in case like you know we are seeing higher profitability coming from the specialty side. That's the reason I was trying to understand. Right, right. <laughs> okay. And and in terms of our CDMO business, how should we have any visibility that you can provide on the uh, in the coming like uh, on the coming fiscal, FY twenty four? It's very difficult, you know that, and I never give you the whole fiscal thing, but uh, that's why I gave you the macro level. Uh, Things that are happening, whether that translates into the business for us or not, we don't know. But as of now, we are hoping that is a, 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 around 10% growth, as was telling you all the time, and we expect the same, if not better. But right now, we can only tell you we have on hand with, uh, less than five months uh, visibility. But now, is there any? It's looking good. Okay, that that's helpful, sir. Again, thank you so much for that. And sir, if we look at the advent deal, uh, where are we in terms of the process right now? Any uh, timelines that you can elude, uh, and in terms of process, you can highlight any details on that side. Regarding the advent thing, I mean they have to do the uh, all the approvals. They have to get it, and uh, we we have the timeline up to August of this year. To get all the approvals, you know, like CCIs and the DOPs and the DIP or you know, whatever you can call it, and uh, they are they have applied and waiting for the uh, approvals process to take place. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. I'll join back with you. Thank you. A reminder to participants to press star and one to ask a question. We have a question from the line of Darshit Shah from Nirvana Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, and thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> so, just you know, a couple of things. One on the uh, you know power integration on the API part, and we were in talks with uh, few of the clients who were probably planning to come and see the facility and then uh, give a go ahead. So, any update you would like to throw on that? And what again? That's it. Oh, power integration of the API. Yeah, we've been talking to them as you know. Uh, last time it was I told you. We are now I mean talking, but uh, they have to come and audit because they are different departments, and uh, they have to come and audit, and uh, they are expected to come second and uh, third quarters. Of, uh, I mean, uh, according to their second and third quarters, that means first and second quarter of ours. Uh, they are likely to show up, and uh, it takes time, but uh, we are working on that direction. Yes. Right. And so currently, uh, how many uh, products do we have under uh, commercial and phase three? If you would uh, tell us, uh, I mean, including the COVID. Well, we have around seven products <laughs> in the pharma uh, grams. Yes, yes. Okay, and. Uh, Any color on the phase three products? Uh, where you no, as of now there is no indication. 
no indication from the customer uh, when that because unless they get the results out and then only we get the information as of now there is no indication whatsoever when that will happen and other things that are in the free when they will move uh, likely to the next level you have not yet as of got it yeah that i understand sir that you don't have any indication but any uh, late stage products if you can uh, see i mean that might happen 6 months 12 months but uh, uh, any number of late stage products we have in the pipeline yeah we have always uh, the number of projects in the phase three and they keep changing it and uh, they have to draw some and they add uh, we have done that with the molecules we have about five in the pipeline We do have late stage projects, but you know we will not be able to give a prediction based on that. That's what we are trying to do. Got it. And sir, uh, lastly, if I may ask uh, uh, on Suvin Life, sir, any update you would like to? Since we hold uh, Suvin Life shares as well, uh, any update you would like to throw on the uh, Suvin three zero three one? What's the progress? How's been the safety part been addressed? Uh, if you, I mean, since we have enrolled quite a few number of patients there. Yeah, we are almost 90 percent. The enrollment has uh, come uh, come into the 90 percent this uh, quarter. But uh, we, according to the uh, estimates by them, because of the seasonality and all that stuff, uh, enrollment it is likely to be in September quarter, October quarter. We should be able to get the data. See, last patient may come in around the June time frame. That means from there, you know, it take about at least 90 days to. One to two days to get the data crunching and then get the final move. Okay, but how's been the safety part? Uh, it, it's been uh, uh, safe enough. Uh, if you yeah, yeah, we just started. We have about nine patients already. In the five zero two fifty. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone. Participants who wish to ask a question are requested to press star and one on their phone now. We have a question from the line of Damayanti Kerai from HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, can you please uh, elaborate a bit more on your CDMO business uh, from what is happening? Uh, mostly at the customer level so you mentioned about r&d and then uh, china plus one strategy etc so can you throw some uh, more color there and how we should look at uh, this business for say next uh, two to three quarters as you know the <coughs> customers interaction happened finally in the last phase before that is only the, uh, the regular uh, meetings which you do not have any other uh, Uh, our processes and the pipelines and all that stuff. Only the uh, transaction-based activity we've been doing it. The way they have said it, now they are coming out of the COVID situation and they're starting the new. Uh, I mean, uh, what do you call it? Uh, putting the budget for the new products and all that stuff. And that's one thing. That means uh, it will start uh, flowing out the new projects uh, eventually. And the second thing they said is uh, they are also looking to outsource uh, more. Uh, I mean, one is the R&D spending is going up. The second thing is uh, they are going to change their sourcing strategy. Uh, uh, it may not happen overnight, uh, as I was telling, uh, from the China to some other territories, and uh, more likely India will be the most uh, opportunity for them, and that's what they are looking at. It. So in that process, uh, uh, we think uh, that's why I gave because I don't give you any projection. I just gave this is uh, because until that time everybody is asking what is China plus one. I was saying no, it may not happen. But uh, after the CPHI, we are kind of uh, uh, inclined to say yes. It is not only the increase in R&D spending, but also the increase in outsourcing in the global market scenario because. Seven percent growth that is happening in India more. Uh, Indian players are likely to get more benefited, and uh, we being in the long term player of more than two and a half decades, working with all these big pharma, and with all the kind of infrastructure and the mindset and the uh, focus with which we do the MT based activities, we are at the uh, front end to get uh, any opportunity that will come to us. That's what it is. Okay. That's
that i think uh, good to hear so uh, are we seeing more like uh, more inquiries or rpf from the customers or uh, things are still in discussion stage and it might take some yeah yeah it will come but it's only a couple of months ago it happened and summer i mean okay, all the uh, uh, holidays are over now they are fully back into the things and they will start now doing this thing i think you will see it in a two to three months uh, the flow should uh, hopefully hopefully increase okay and uh, just a clarification r and d so i guess uh, till a few months back we heard about uh, some curtailment or pull back uh, by customers in terms of r and d spend now like you are saying uh, things should uh, improve from here on and you are already uh, seeing some i'll say we heard that we heard that but we have not seen on the ground yet I and mean, only you will see that if i get uh, uh, in terms of two three <laughs> per month requirement then i'll say yes yeah. okay so uh, considering all uh, most likely say another uh, one or two quarters uh, we should be seeing things moving up from here uh, after that that's, uh, that's what our hope based on the feedback we have okay sir that's very helpful thank you for your response thank you we have a next question from the line of abdul kader puranwala from ilara capital please go ahead Yeah, hi sir thank you for the opportunity uh, so uh, could you please provide some flavor on the product abdul aapka okay, voice bahut slow hai can you can increase your yeah uh, is it is it better now sir yeah this is better sir yeah so can you please provide some color on the products which uh, on the pharma as well as on the specialty chemical side which would you expect to go commercial in the next 2 3 years any uh, you know timeline or anything what you would heard from the customers uh, you know since you mentioned that the blue pharma activity is picking up so on the on the commercialization side if you could provide some Uh, clarity would be very helpful it is uh, you know very well that it's very difficult even for the customer to say anything and uh, for me to tell is highly impossible because unless the data comes out they cannot tell so as i was telling to the earlier caller i have no indication whatsoever with respect to the specialty chemicals we have already mentioned the fourth molecule should come sometime in the 24 uh, time frame Uh, that's the only thing we have an update on that. Uh, no, not an update. We are re- reiterating whatever we said earlier. So it's very difficult for me. It's what it is. Until they know, we don't know. It can happen maybe two months from now, but we don't know that thing because we know because we you understand we also know how the drug discovery works. So we will not be knowing our own one zero three zero three one what will happen uh, until suddenly until November time frame, right? So similar thing for the our own investment customers also. They will not be able to tell. Only thing they can tell whether the study is going on or uh, about to conclude or whatever. That's the only they can tell. But right now, for the results, they will not be able to forecast because these are all double blind studies. Got it, sir. So, sir, on the third molecule on the specialty chemical side, uh, sir, has it started contributing? I mean, in Q3, was there any contribution or that? No, come no, it's to... only on the quarter one. It's over. After that, they said it uh, again, again, eighteen months later only. It will come back again. It will come back. All right, got it. And. Uh, So lastly, on on the margin front, uh, so, uh, you know, if you could provide some clarity as to you know where the margins would sustain, would this 42, 43 percent range, uh, you know, would be something which could sustain ahead? Uh, I mean, when you talk about from an FI 24, 25 perspective. Yes, I mean uh, we always uh, <clears throat> if you remember we always say plus 40 percent is uh, normal for us as of now. The thing stands. Uh, okay, it will be with two percent extra, one quarter, three percent extra, one quarter, but uh, plus forty percent is normal for us. And uh, as of now, I don't see any reason why it will go down. As of now, things can change, and it can also go up, as you know, some quarters in the year. But uh, as in all, all in all, in a year, in a year, we are in the range. Sure, sir. Understood. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Thank you. we have an next question from the line of gokul maheshwari from avrika capital please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity 
so could you give an update on where you are on the castor facility and your uh, uh, your plans to really scale up the uh, production facility which you acquired uh, and whether that requires more investment can you repeat the same for the castor yeah so can you just give an update on the cascor facility which you acquired last year and whether uh, you are uh, on track to increase the capacity utilization over there and would you require more investment in that facility as of now we have filed about 10 already and there are some filings are still going on Uh, the approvals are coming one by one, and the first quarter will be sometime in April, May time frame will be going out. And uh, right now, I don't need any uh, capital expenditure uh, for the Casper. So only when these things uh, we have 1.2 billion uh, capacity in that, and uh, only when that is uh, done, uh, we will be knowing it. And uh, you know, as you know, we also have the capability at uh, <coughs> Pashmila Ranch side. So a mix and match, we can do that. We uh, we have enough time to create infrastructure if needed. Uh, that's not a problem. But right right now we don't need any additional capacity. In the nine months, uh, what would be the contribution of cash for in our sales this year? As of now, there is no contribution much. It's only the expense, and uh, we clearly mentioned it will be about twelve to fifteen months when we took over this uh, company. Uh, before we see, we see the revenue, and we expect the uh, revenue neutral only. I mean, uh, the uh, uh, break even will be about uh, thirty six months uh, from the day when we are taken over. So uh, it depends on the, how the molecules uh, get approved and when they go, and what is the uh, profitability out of that. And uh, as of now, it's only one or two that are going. So based on that, it's very difficult to tell until it goes to market. Okay. Thank you. And what is the estimated capex for this year, uh, FI twenty three, and uh, and also for FI twenty four? The FI, as you know, we have taken an in principle approval of about six hundred crores altogether. Out of that, is the only one that is uh, we are using two hundred crores towards the Surya Fair facility. I mean, uh, new building uh, creation, which is the main thing that is going on. Half of it is spent. Uh, half of it is being spent within the next six months, and we hope to second quarter onwards. Uh, we uh, we start it will be first quarter, but uh, it is delayed by a couple of months. So it will be the second quarter onwards. We have the validation takes place, and that will be utilized. The rest of the capex is uh, for the trans when uh, change of the R and D location. Whenever the government asks us to move, that's why we are taking uh, proactively in principle approval, so that is not going to happen now because no indication is given. There are the uh, things that are going on politically; they may not happen within the next one year because the election will be coming in. The other one is the Pasha Maila side. As of now, uh, we are uh, qualifying the Vizag side and the Pasha Maila side for any new projects also. Right now. We are okay, and uh, as and when it requires, uh, based on the pipeline and the progress and requirement, so then uh, we can start the activity. Right now, it may not be until maybe six to nine months. We will not be able to. We will not be starting that uh, activity, that uh, third portion of the thing. Other than that, you know, we have a regular capex of which is the balancing equipment because it's a mix and match thing which we do all the time, multi products. About to seventy, sixty to eighty crores uh, every year will be doing replacement capex, all the balance needed for capex. So that will be a continuous process. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Tushar Manudhani from Motila Loswal. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. sir uh, firstly on uh, now that over a period of time uh, and given the kind of cramps traction there has been so basis your experience if you could share in terms of what kind of technology platforms or chemistry skill sets that has been little uh, or rather unique or differentiated to suve in which which sort of drives the business in the cramp segment in particular i would not say it's the technology platform that differentiates us it is the focus With which we work to the innovator products is the one that defines because they knowing fully well the first kilo you supplied maybe the last kilo you supplied in the MP based field chemistry 
that is keeping us things. Other than that, I mean, the technology, everybody has it, but their focus is going mainly on the generic side and backward indicating into some kind of brand. Ours is a, uh, more or less on the 90% to 95% is on the NP based activity, and we do the leverage out onto the genetic side a little bit. So you cannot say it's detected. As, uh, as far as the chemistry is concerned, except the chlorination and phosgenation, since we do many number of projects, we have done about 980 projects so far from since the inception, we've been dabbled into each and every chemistry, at the gram level to kilo level to one gram level. Okay, okay. Uh, also, if you could break down the, uh, let's say, gross block uh, into CDMO pharma and CDMO specialty chemicals. Uh, Abdul and I will provide you. Right now, I don't have this information. I will provide you. But thanks. I will update sure. the call. Sure. Sure. Just uh, uh, maybe if, if uh, the asset turn into different segments, what it could be approximately, if that you could share. Yeah. yeah. I will Okay, sir. That, that's it from my side. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Pratik Kothari from Unique Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, sir. sir. Just one clarification, this fourth molecule in chemical that we expect to come in next year. So this is already commercialized in the past, right? And it, does that they ask us for a supply next year? Uh, this is not a new molecule. Which one is that? The the fourth molecule which we mentioned on the chemical. No, no, it is a brand new one. We never supplied. We have only qualified our sample, and it is there says 24th uh, sometime in 24th it will happen. Calendar 24th. Okay, fair enough. And so this regarding this new capacity, we mentioned that we'll only uh, start to think about it say, six months, six nine months down the line, uh, and. Also, we say that there's a lot of customer demand, the China plus one or the whole supply chain we say. Uh, so usually how, how long does it take for us to put up a new capacity and, uh, uh, and just your, your thoughts on that? Okay, for everybody's information, uh, compared to any other generic molecule, uh, creation of a capacity is a, a, a kind of a well, uh, uh, redetermined. Our case, what happens is when the molecule is getting stabilized and when the opportunity is coming in, by the time the peak the thing requirement comes, it takes three years. So what I'm saying in the beginning, we do in the what do you call this uh, campaign-based activity, but we'll be knowing that it will come back. So based on that, we'll put it. If it is then only uh, making it uh, with the balancing equipment, it takes six months. If I need to create a total block, then it takes 18 months. So it depends. Most, most of the time, we don't create the block itself, but when we create the block, it will be a one purpose thing. But it will be more or less what happens if I am doing a, a, a campaign now, I want to continue the campaign, then I may need to use a couple of balancing equipment to use the unutilized capacity to put to the new product. For that, uh, it will take three to four months only. And that balancing So it's all uh, because luckily for us in this business model, the time is, I mean, when it will be known, but the time is at least two years to three years. So we can certainly create the capacity uh, to do that. Secondly, we also can do uh, the early stage steps in some other unit, to suppose if they want more quantity suddenly for whatever reason. We have done that earlier and uh, we'll never have any problem because. Most of the time, ours is a campaign based activity, except for the pressurity chemicals. So, even though we have, we say 100% capacity utilization, it is only 70% because not all of the equipment can be utilized. So, that 30% can be uh, using the balancing equipment, I can put more products. So, we will never have a shortage of uh, capacity, but uh, at the same time, when the new capacity is required, we have enough or ample time to do it, and we have the backups in the other units also, based on the customer request, we can do that also, at least each part, I mean, uh, chemistry. So this is the way it works. No, fair enough, very clear. In fact, this is last request, uh, even on the last call, we had mentioned that we might get the management of advent on the call and maybe just hear from them, if it, maybe on the next phone call, we can do that. 
management of the advent will come only when the transaction takes place right until that time also we are still here okay sure thank you sir and all the best thank you we have a next question from the line of darshan shah from multi act please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity this is rohan sir my question is with respect to the proposed merger with the advent owned entities are those entities uh, carrying any unutilized capacities that we could potentially use for our crams operations and does need for us to do capex gets reduced or are those unutilized capacities if they exist cannot be used for our crams business let me tell you i is the uh... not to rise on my part to just estimate what's going to happen to the capacity how much they are utilizing until this transaction is over we are not going to talk anything about the cohans platform yes but uh, the general question is yes certainly it will be a plus now for anything no uh, whatever i am using like uh, just before we call i was telling no if i need additional steps in other units i can do that similarly when that comes in same thing can be done right but right now we are not going to talk about that we have clearly given you the statement made by the advent during the uh, signing of the ceremony that uh, they have an intent to do the uh, merging that platform into suvan so that that can be capacity enhancement will be used back when integration can be used back. content can be and more technologies can be coming into the picture and uh, more customers will be there and uh, they have the global out, uh, uh, reach and which they can bring more opportunities also but that is post thing right right now we are concentrating what we do and when once that happens i think uh, then only i can uh, talk anything about it and i think uh, but uh, not knowing fully their uh, operations i will not be able to comment anything on that at this time okay sir thank you and all the best thank you thank you We have a next question from the line of Rajeshekar M S from an individual investor. Please go ahead. Sir Rajeshekar. Now my question has already been answered. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Hussein Kaksi from Ambit Asset Management. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, hi. Thank you, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes. so uh, i wanted to get a sense on uh, when is it that our uh, pharma molecule is coming up for patent expiry i guess uh, the first two molecules that we launched uh, two to that that were commercialized two to three years back were uh, the patent was expiring somewhere in 2024 2025 so if you can give some idea on that Yeah, I mean the earliest is I think is you know, 25, but as you know, these big pharma they will have the uh, uh, additional in I mean uh, uh, indications will be given, and uh, they will be going for another five years or so. So uh, I don't see anything until 28 actually to be uh, going out of the, our uh, uh, supply. Uh, that's based on the uh, in, uh, interactions we have with the customers. So we don't see any. Even though it is going uh, out of patent, but uh, the uh, it will be three to four years from there only. If anything at all, uh, there will be a reduction in the revenues out of those things. Otherwise, they will be staying at the same, thing, if not more. Uh, so uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Next two to three years, it will not affect. Certainly. Got it. Got it. Got it. Two to three years. And sir, uh, one thing was that you were talking about that now probably you are seeing increased inquiry from customers to. shift from china to india and uh, talks happening in that regards so in your uh, assessment how long does it take for this to happen or probably uh, translate anything into a meaningful opportunity for you or other players because i think see uh, for example in uh, generic uh, you have to go and modify the dmf or the and or something like that so in in kind of an related to innovator negotiation suppose they are doing a conversation now so how long will Will it be that you would anticipate this to reflect into any uh, you know tangible numbers? Yeah, as you rightly said, it is uh, not going to be uh, overnight. Even right now, this is only the uh, discussions uh, based on the discussions we could uh, gather. This is what's going to happen. 
And you know, when sites change in the existing molecule itself, it takes a uh, year to two years, sometimes back, two years also. Similarly, changing the source from some other place to here, especially if it is a regulatory immediate, it will take time. And uh, I know the process, you know, uh, when they say something, it takes at least a year before you see real tangible results out of it. So, in general, uh, <clears throat> but when once that happens, it will have a uh, win-win situation for both the uh, customer and the, uh, the partner. And uh, we hope to get those opportunities, not only for students, but all uh, the players in India. Eventually. That's why it will not be uh, next six months or something like that. But uh, even for the uh, flow of projects, uh, we are only said that we have heard this is the macro level we are telling in general it will happen in the long run and being a uh, first in uh, the line uh, we are the first one to start the cramps project way back in 95 and nobody knows what the cramps is all about we thought we will be the best one to get some advantage out of that that's what i said we need to the other players understood that's that's helpful that's it from my side thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone. Participants who wish to ask a question may please press star and one on their phone now. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this uh, third quarter results and year-to-date results. As you know, and uh, <clears throat> our uh, flat is growth as of now, and we expect to end the year with a slight positive growth and uh, maintaining the margin. And in the long term, with the new opportunities that are coming in, new thinking that are happening in the uh, global pharma also thing, and the opportunities uh, because of the China plus one, and also opportunity of long-term relationships we have, and the existing capacity building that is taking place, and also the number of projects what we have in the pipeline and all the things goes well. But at the same time, you will be seeing, you know, you know not only quarter on quarter uh, variations, but uh, year on variations also will be there. But in general, I mean, in the long run, it is a very um, uh, promising uh, thing, especially with the change in the mindset of the global pharma for outsourcing and which are targeting towards India. And being Suvin is one of the front runners, I think we like to get the benefit out of it. With this, I thank each and every one and uh, hope to catch up with you during the next one call. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Suvain Pharmaceuticals Limited, that concludes the conference call. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. The conference is no longer being recorded.